Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. On this channel I go through all things accounting and finance related to help you with your studies and specifically if you're a student or if you're a small business owner or somebody looking to invest for the first time. Please do consider subscribing as it really does help push the channel out to more students. Today we're going to have a look at overhead allocation, absorption and limiting factors in particular because I know there's a lot of students on the Facebook channel who are currently struggling really badly with this topic. It just seems to catch everybody out and I don't think they actually explain it very well in the books. So we're going to hop onto the computer in a second and have a look at a few examples to hopefully help you out. So we're just going to have a look at this example very quickly of unit costs with cake production. So we've got 5,000 cake units produced. He can see direct labour and direct materials making up this prime cost of 32,000. Now if we add 32,000 to 7,000 for the variable production overheads we get to our marginal cost of production and then if we add on the 9,000 here we get to 48,000 for absorption cost of production and the 48 plus the 11 gets us to the 59,000. Now if we looked at unit cost calculated if you were asked this in the exam to work out the unit cost for the prime cost of one unit we would take this 32,000 up here and divide that by 5,000 for the units that were produced and that gets us to £6.40. Now with the marginal cost of one unit, we simply take marginal cost, divide that by the number of units produced again to get us to the £7.80 cost of producing just one unit. Absorption cost of one unit, again we're just taking the absorption costs of production and dividing that by the 5,000 units produced to give us £9.60 and then the total cost of one unit is this total cost of 59,000 divided by £5,000 to get us to £11.80 for the cost of one unit to be produced. If we move on very quickly though to limiting factors, what limiting factors are are the availability of materials, skilled labour, machine hours, finance, quantity of output, etc. that you might face when you're producing one single unit or multiple units. The basic things that you need to understand is how to work out contribution per unit. And the way that we do that is if we look at product X and Y here, you can see the sales price per X and variable costs and contribution are here. So we have sales price per unit less the variable cost equals contribution per unit. So 120 minus 60 gets you to 60. Now with product Y, where well we've got sales price of 250 less variable cost of 150, that gets you down to a contribution per unit of 100. Now, initially you might look at this and go, okay, well the company should go ahead and start producing company wide. And this is where a lot of students fall down. You might think that's the better because that's a higher figure than 60. But what you need to be looking at is contribution ratio. So it's this additional part down here. So what we do to work this out is take it, the contribution per unit, so the 60 here, and divide that by the £120 sales price per unit and that gives us 50% compared to only 40% for product Y which is the 100 divided by 250. So because of that by producing product X which is the higher percentage here we're maximising profits. So that's what you want to be looking at in your exam first of all. Now if we have a look at an example where a company produces two different products Bakewell and Sponge now we have the following information, so we're told weekly sales demand is 15,000 and 13,000 for sponge. Now the sales price we've got is 80 for Bakewell, direct materials of 35, direct labour of 10, fixed production overheads of 15 and for sponge we have sales price of 110, direct materials of 40, direct labour of 13 and fixed production overheads of 18. So if we want to calculate break even weekly sales and margin of safety, which they probably will ask you in the exam, we want to work out what our fixed production cost is first. So fixed production cost is simply the weekly sales demand, so the units, times by the fixed production overheads. So that gets us to 225,000 and 234,000 for sponge. Now if we want to work out contribution per unit, that is simply taking the sales price minus any variable costs and that gives you your contribution per unit. So 80 minus 35 and minus 10 for these direct materials and direct labour gets us to 35. And over here for sponge, 110 minus 40 minus 13 gives us a contribution per unit of 57. Now break even units are simply fixed costs divided by revenue per unit less variable cost. In other words, fixed costs divided by contribution per unit. So our break-even units are £6,428.57. That's around that actually. So general round it to down. So break-even units are 
and 4,105 because we're taking the fixed production cost of 225,000 divided by 35 over here and for sponge we're taking a 234,000 divided by 57. Now if you ask what the margin of safety is, again let's just round that down, what that is is it's taking the total number of units here, so the sales demand here, minus our break even. So it's 8571 units is our margin of safety and 8895 for sponge, i.e. 13,000 units minus 4,105 that we worked out for break even units. Okay, now if we're told that both use the same materials and labour and that the amount of labour and materials available for the next week is only 32,000 labour hours and 32,000 kg of materials what we need to work out is the total materials required for each so okay so what we need to do is we need to take the direct materials divided by 30 kilograms of direct materials that we use and that gives us the amount of kg for one so if we times that by the actual units being produced we get 17,500 and 17,333 here okay now total labor is required if we take 10 divided by 11 so i'm just going to highlight where i've got these from here and that is from here so I'm just doing the 13 divided by 11 and the 10 divided by the 11 to give me that per unit, but I need to times that by the actual number of units I'm producing. Okay, so I've got 13636.36 and 15363.64 from there. Okay, so now I need to work out the contribution per unit of a limiting factor to two decimal places. Okay, so in terms of the contribution for limiting factor here, if we know that the actual amount of labour hours and materials available are shown here, so here if we just add these up, okay, you can see that, I'll just put that in orange, that the total labour hours actually required is 29,000. We have 32,000 labour hours available, but the total number of materials required is 35,000. If we round that up, we've only got 32,000 available. So the actual materials is the limiting factor here. Now, the contribution per unit of limiting factor, therefore, is going to be this 1.17 or 1.33. Now, if we have a look at the optimal product units, what we want to do. Now if we look at the contribution per unit over sales price per unit, you can see that the sponge has got 52% compared to 44% over here for Bakewell. So we want to make more of the sponge. So optimal production would be to make 13,000 of the sponge and then whatever that's left. So if we look at the materials used, we're going to use 17,333 for the sponge, so 100%. And then the amount that's left is if we take 32,000 kg of materials minus 17,333, that gets us to 14,667 that we're available to use for Bakewell. We do the materials used divided by this 1.17, so that gets us to 12,572. So I hope you found all of that useful. Again, do consider subscribing, share it with individuals that you think might benefit, like the video, and otherwise hope you're having a nice day and I shall see you on the next video.